going on guys? This is going to be a quick, real quick review um, and some of my intricacies. Not really a huge, uh, in depth review, but it's a Ryobi 9 inch bandsaw as you can see. Purchased at Home Depot. Um, now we're going to cover pretty much three things. A basic quick setup, um, what I did with the wheel balancing slash removal, and uh, using a metal blade to try and cut metal with this thing. So first off, uh, for bandsaw setup, um, I came across a good uh, good video when I was looking for videos on this thing, and I came across a YouTube channel. It was called The Woodworking Shows. Um, it's uh, a dude who did one of the videos. <clears throat> I think it was like a trade convention or something. Um, he's with Carter Products, and he gives a very in-depth uh, bandsaw setup clinic. So you definitely want to check that out. I'm gonna put the link. Um, below in the description bar, definitely check that out if you're interested in using bandsaws. Uh, he seems to really know his stuff, man, and he uh, he kind of went against uh, the conventional wisdom that's out there on YouTube, especially with co plan out wheels and stuff like that. And I'll get into that. So, for setup, I have removed for this video <clears throat> the table, these uh, these three screws, unbolt those, pull up the guide, and you can uh, just take it off. So we'll open it up. Here's another cool feature. Another cool feature of this bandsaw is that it has a key that you plug in here and take out. And even if it's plugged in, you can't turn it on. Good safety feature. Now, he says number one, that the gullet, the deepest part of the uh, cut-in, the deepest part of the tooth, should be in the center of the wheel. Don't just put the center of the bandsaw blade, you know, measuring it all together, the width. Put the deepest part of the gullet in the center of the wheel. This way it'll track properly. <clears throat> that was number one. Uh, one thing I didn't know. Um, number two, the um, coplanarity, if that's the right word. Or you don't have to worry about getting them coplanar because the uh, factory sets it up a certain way. They're not really supposed to be exactly because it tracks better when they're not coplanar, supposedly. He says. Um, and they should only be... You know, adjusting the tension, you should check it by just, you know, moving moving the blade to either side. It should only go an eighth of an inch, because um, the, the blades may be welded a different length. And the third one was having the uh, the guides, whether they're bearings or blocks, metal blocks, steel blocks, cool blocks, whatever you, uh, whatever you have. They should not be touching the blade. If they touch the blade, it's going to cause friction. Friction causes heat, and that's going to deform the blade. You, you want to, you know, some some people will use like a piece of paper or a dollar to put them in there, but he says, you know, set them up and see, as you can see, this one is touching, so that one has to be adjusted. But you just check it by actual spinning the wheels because that's the only true way to, to see what's going on with the bandsaw. So that was another uh, <coughs> handy little thing I picked up. Um, and last but not least, it's the, uh, you know, checking, checking to make sure that the, that the table is it a 90 degree angle to the bandsaw? Again, check that video out. It's it's pretty really cool. I found it very interesting. And the third, oh yeah. So for balancing, when I took this wheel off by removing this E-clip and removing this Allen bolt, I found that this wheel was a little unbalanced. Um, I bought this, it, it was already used, um, even though it was new, so that when I saw the back bearing, it looks a little bound up, so I just used it, just pull this, I used this uh, metal screw to spin it on, but make sure it's just on the, uh, I made sure it was on the outer bearing, uh, because the other one looks like it was uh, kind of, it was kind of rough, you can just feel it, um, I don't know if it was due to uh, heat, heat build up, but it looks like there was some wear on that one, so it's not, I just uh, sprayed it up with some RC motor spray, just to, <clears throat> just to clean it up as much as possible. And just put a light drop of, uh, of oil in there and just spun it. And then just uh, I got some <coughs> Chavant clay that I used to have for modeling. Uh, this is a non sulfurated plastiline. And uh, I just mashed it in there. And it seemed to help out. It didn't, uh, didn't uh, you know, vibrate as much. But uh, when I, <laughs> I vacuumed it up to get all the wood pieces out of there, it vacuumed my uh, clay balancing out. So, that's it for uh, balancing. Oh, and when removing this wheel, when you remove this <coughs> this Allen bolt here, after taking the C-clip out, 
there's going to be a nut behind here <clears throat> so you want to watch that's going to drop down because when you take this off and you go to put it back on you're going to be you, you're going to be <laughs> threading it in there and wondering why it's not catching there's a bolt behind there it's going to drop down if you don't keep tensioning by backing uh, backing it all the way out so you're going to have to take the full bolts off of the housing behind here to get to access that bolt and properly removing the tension nut. It's not that, it's pretty easy uh, if you're mechanically inclined at all. It'll be pretty simple. I'm going to reinstall it. And thirdly was the metal blade I bought from Bosch. Well, it's specifically a metal cutting bandsaw blade. Um, the blade length for this is 59 and a half to, uh, 59 and a quarter to 59 and a half I believe. Um, I'll have to double check that. And uh, Bosch was one of the only ones that had a metal a metal saw a blade saw that fit this. Because at Home Depot, the smallest one they had was a 62 inch and it does not fit. Pretty handy. They saw the saw that doesn't have a blade that fits it. So anyway, and I understand this is a nine inch band saw. You know, not many people will use this um, probably for metal working, but I wanted to, and I figured there's a, some of you guys out there that want to. But uh, word of warning that. That Bosch, Bosch blade does not cut steel. I'm going to be making custom knives on this channel, LPD knives, as you know. And it basically, this is just 0.18, uh, 0.18 inches thick. Uh, regular um, 52-100 steel, high carbon steel. And it basically laughed at it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend the 20, uh, 20 something dollars what it was on Amazon to order that blade to cut some steel. And if you, uh, this thing uh, is good for cutting wood, especially you know I'm using, <clears throat> making some test knives just to feel them out. And uh, this thing is, what is this? it's about you know five millimeters. It's two tenths of an inch. So that wood is nothing to cut wood. This thing does it beautifully. It makes nice turns with it. So, you know, just set it up properly and you know it cuts it excellent so for wood good metal don't think so so that's about it for this for this review as always uh, if you have any questions or comments feel free to feel free to leave them and as always thanks for watching